It's September 26th, which means today is Ohio's opening day of archery season. And it's been much anticipated for a lot of hunters. I don't get too jacked up over it anymore like I used to, just because I don't expect much from it. Although it is exciting just knowing that you're going to be able to go sit in a tree for the first time for a lot of people. Um, I kind of scratched that itch last weekend when we went to Kentucky. So that probably took away from a little bit of the anticipation for today. Um, I did go out the other day and check a couple cameras that I have out there. I don't typically like to do that just because I don't want to be in there right before the start of season. However, in hindsight, I'm glad I did it because if not for that, I would have been hunting a different area than I'm actually going to be going to tonight. The area I was planning on going to, I have a camera in there and although there was a real nice buck in there showing up, um, as of lately for about the past two or three weeks there's been nothing the camera that was pretty much dry all summer long now has a deer that i've been watching showing up in that area and he showed up i think four different evenings all kind of spaced out by a few different days so about every fourth day he was showing up and i have a feeling he might be bedding in some corn on the neighbors or possibly in the woods where i'm going to be hunting um, but we have good south southwest wind and that'll set up really, really well for me to sneak in there. And I'm going to be going in mobile tonight, which I had a feeling I'm going to be doing a lot of that. I do have a permanent set hung in there, and I'm already going against that. I'm going to be hanging about 70 yards away from that stand. So I'm excited to get out here. It's two or 3.30 right now, excuse me. And I just plan on getting in there a little bit early and hanging out despite the 80 degree temperatures. So hopes aren't up too much, but I'm excited to get out there. I can see the trail below me where that buck was coming in. 
because I'm set up where I had that camera up until a couple days ago. By the looks of it, this buck is coming out of this bottom up to where I'm at. And I would imagine he's feeding out to the beans, which are straight back over my shoulder. I'm sitting off the bean field probably about 80 or 90 yards. And from up here, I have a really good view down into this bottom. So if this guy decides to show up, I'll be able to see him from a long ways away. As you can tell, I am no longer wearing my camo. And the reason for that is I got back to my car and put on some clothes that would be considered appropriate to wear to a wedding reception. And that's where I'm headed now. And that's actually why Jake and Nick were not in the stand tonight. But the hunt itself went pretty well. I saw 10 or 11 deer and every single one of them was a doe or a fawn. So not real exciting, didn't see any bucks. However, I elected to slip out of there uh, through the woods rather than the beans just because I figured a lot of the deer would be headed to the beans and I figured if I went out that way I'd probably spook a lot of them. Sure enough I spoke with the landowner once I got back to my car and he had said that there were three real nice bucks out in the beans pretty much at dark and that's a good sign however I was kind of upset because I should have seen those deer in theory if they were going out to the spot where he said they were and it also means that they were probably right in front of my stand that I have permanently hung that I elected not to hunt tonight. But I think I'll probably come back out tomorrow. I wasn't planning on it if I didn't see much tonight, but if he's seeing deer doing that, I don't know how much longer they're still gonna do that in daylight. So I'll probably either go hunt the set that I have permanently hung out there or maybe hang where he kind of described these deer to be, but kind of got me jacked up for tomorrow. Uh, it was a little warm tonight, but for seeing deer, it don't matter. So it's evening number two of Ohio's archery season. I hunted with Nick this morning over at his place, and we saw, well, we spooked two deer once we got down from the stand. Uh, I'm headed back to where I was last night, but I'll probably be in a different, actually, I know I'll be in a different tree. Uh, the landowner last night told me that right at dark there were three nice bucks out in the bean field basically right behind where i was sitting probably about 100 120 yards and i have a stand hung over the the field edge there but i'm not sure that i have enough shots out into the actual beans themselves i have a shot to the field edge and there's a scrape there but i'm not confident that i'll be able to shoot out into the field whatsoever so i'm bringing my stand, which I'm glad I said that because my stand is still sitting in the garage beside me right now. I need to get in that, that in the car, but that's what the plan is for tonight. It's not quite four o'clock right now, and I'm just about to leave. I left at 3.30 yesterday, and that put me all set up by five. So if it's the same tonight, uh, it'll be about 5.30 by the time I'm getting set up. 
unless I elect to sit that stand that I already have hung there. If that's the case, I'd be set up by five again tonight just because I wouldn't have to worry about hanging anything. So I'm gonna jump out here, grab this stand and get on the road. Well, I got in here and I elected not to bring my mobile set out here with me, it's in my car, thinking that this stand would be good to sit over these beans tonight. Well, I just climbed up there and I can't see out there at all. And I'm not walking back to my car to get my stand. So this thing is coming down and we're moving back there to where we can shoot out here to these beans tonight. Should be fun. Well, it's exactly 5.36 right now. And I just got set up which means I moved a stand. I got out here in pretty good time and planned on hunting that permanent set because I didn't want to mess with moving anything tonight. And I thought I would have some good shots out to this bean field. But when I got back here, I climbed up in it and I had about three shooting lanes and none of them were out into the beans. I had a couple in the woods and one right to the field edge, which I didn't think was gonna be enough. I walked around and found a tree real quick, and there was about one that might work, and I'm now hanging in it. And it's not a pretty set, although it's pretty comfortable. It was not easy getting up here. It was pretty much like that the whole way up. And there was one little section that was straight enough to hang a stand in, and that's where I'm at now. There's been bucks showing up in this bean field the past couple nights. So I really wanted to be over it tonight. I got a nice shooting lane now. Probably about 70 degrees of wide open shooting lane. And I'm hung up here probably about 18 feet. And I have a lot of cover, so I don't think I'll get picked off. But I'm going to settle in and hope these deer start moving. Today is Wednesday, September 30th, and that means I am headed out for my annual birthday deer hunt. I'm actually headed out to meet Jake and Nick first. It's two o'clock now, and Jake hit a real nice buck last night, and we weren't too sure about the shot and weren't positive that we were even gonna find this deer, but Nick went back out this morning and was able to track him down, and it's a real nice buck. So I wanted to have time to check this deer out first, before I got in a tree myself. So that's where I'm headed. After that, I'm gonna bounce over to this property and get in a tree. And there's been a really, really nice buck out here. We've had pictures of him from the summer. And then Jake and Nick hunted it last night, saw this deer. And then a few days prior, Nick and his dad both saw this deer as well. So the deer's pretty consistent and I think that'd be a pretty sweet birthday present to get this thing on the ground. So that's the plan for tonight. Kind of crummy out. I do love those cold, wet fall days, but the wind tonight might put a damper on things. I know on the radio they just said that we're supposed to get gusts up to 40 miles an hour. So that may blow me out of the tree, but 
there's no other way that I would rather spend my birthday. Um, I didn't yeah. want to make too much noise because we're getting close to that field edge. Yeah. So I hung it, and then Sunday night, I literally, I'm sitting in the stand 45 minutes, and that nice Tim walks out, and he walks out all the way at the bottom of the hill, and he's turned around and just walked right back in. Huh. Like, fed around a little bit and went right back in. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> so, and I haven't seen, like... Birthday, Buck. Congrats. It's not my birthday. Buck. Birthday, Buck. I'll take it. Not a birthday, Buck. At least you got the touch one. Yeah, feels good. I forgot what they feel like. I didn't get one last year. So, it's just after 4 o'clock right now. I'm getting ready to go in. I'm going to be hanging and hunting. And there's a gravel road that goes into these woods right here. The wind is pretty gusty, as you can probably see, but the wind's blowing right back to my car, which I'm standing at right now. And as we were standing up there taking pictures of Jake's buck, another guy came driving out of here, and he said he was back here checking cards and squirrel hunting. So between the pressure last night of tracking Jake's buck and that guy being in here today, I don't know if I actually expect to see a whole lot. I know I'll see deer just because it's cold and there's food sources around here. However, I don't know that I'll see the right bucks. But I'm gonna grab my stand and get in here and get this stand hung up. It is now 4.52 in the afternoon and I just got all set up over this logging road. Actually, it's more of an access road for the farmer. <laughs> but they did come in and do a select cut in these woods. And I'm set up where Jake watched that real big one last night. And he said he came out and got on this road and then fed up it towards where we park. So I'm not one to bet on a deer doing the same thing two nights in a row. Especially with this wind, I almost wonder if they'll be out in the fields where they feel a little bit safer since they can't hear real well over the wind. There's a couple rubs down below me that they said he actually made last night. And walking in on this road, there's these oak trees that are absolutely raining acorns. And in some places, it seems like there's so many acorns that the deer don't focus on them. But like I said, they did a select cut in these woods. So I would imagine a lot of the nice oaks that were in here got cut out. So there probably isn't a huge acorn crop on this farm. So that's the plan for tonight. It's not even 5 o'clock yet, so we got a ways to go. And I know they said they saw him last night at 5.45. So let's hope he does the same thing again.
It's October 2nd, and I'm headed over here to the farm we hunt in southern Ohio. Came down with Abby. She actually goes to the university down here, so she had to do stuff for school today. And I decided while she does that, I'm going to go over here, check things out. We haven't been down in probably three or so weeks, I'd say. And last time we were here, we checked out the food plot that we planted back in August, and it was looking great. And so I want to check that out look at some cameras and I'll probably even sit tonight somewhere we have a ground blind over that food plot as well as a tree stand and I might end up there just kind of depends so we did actually just pick up another tactic camera reveal cell cam and I'm really excited about trying these cameras out this year and the Walmart in this area actually was one of the few Walmarts that had them in stock so we picked one up just a little bit ago got it all set up I plan on getting that out tonight too because on farms like these where they're a couple hours away from where you live you can't get down there as much as you might like to and having a cell cam could be huge for making sure we plan our trips a little more strategically when the deer are moving so there's not a lot of huge bucks down here and that's kind of why I'm not real sure if I'm even gonna hunt tonight However, there's a nice 10 point that we've been hunting for about five years now that Abby really wants to kill. So hopefully this trail cam will help us do that. And she's busy tonight. However, tomorrow evening and probably Sunday evening, uh, we'll be in a tree or in the ground blind hunting that buck. So I'm excited to get over here and check it out. So I'm at the farm now. And I wasn't real sure what I wanted to do for this evening. There's so many spots to go to and I wasn't able to bring my mobile set because there wasn't room in the car so that kind of scratched that out because typically I probably would just like to go some random spot where I find sign or a good trail and just set up over it just because I like to see what's going on in certain areas however I think I'm gonna go set this food plot just because it's getting about time where I should be headed out to the stand and I really want to check out the food plot. So since I already want to go there anyway to look at it, I should probably just set up over it since it's getting to be that time anyhow. So if you look behind me, back up there on that ridge top is where a deer that we've been hunting, he's a 10 point mainframe buck, nothing special, but he's definitely an old, old smart deer. He beds right up there. And he looks out over this valley, which is where we typically come from. We would normally walk this bottom up. However, we found that he watches our access and would see us coming. So we never saw him on the hoof. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to start walking out this driveway, looping all the way up around the back side of the ridge, and then accessing that stand, which is on top somewhere right up in there over this food plot and the wind comes out of the south so basically blows up this bottom or along the top side of that ridge and that should be the key to success for killing this deer we feel that we have a really really strong plan going into this season and i honestly don't know if i would shoot him or not I guess that would be kind of a game time decision. However, um, it's a deer that Abby really wants to kill. So I guess just depending on uh, how he looks in person, I may or may not. We'll see. So I'm going to go ahead and get geared up and head on out there. So I'm getting close to the spot where I'm going to set up. Right now I'm on the back side of this ridge and I've already looped all the way around. And I came in off this road back here and I saw one decent rub on the way in. Probably about 50 yards back behind me. And I'm actually surprised the number of just hammered down trails running north and south with this ridge <laughs> off this side. And as you can see here, Basically, that edge of the, the ridge is a sheer cliff. And there's one spot that gives away enough to sneak up through this little kind of crevice. And it's going to be a pain getting up there. 
However, if we go in undetected every time we hunt, that'll be worth it. So as long as the wind hasn't changed, we should be good. Well, I'm just about all the way there. As you can see behind me, I gotta do a little rock climbing before I get to the top. And I just came up out of this big bottom. The wind is blowing like that from the south to the north. And the food plot's just a little bit south of here once I get up on the ridge top. So, pretty much, this whole edge of the ridge is lined by sheer rock faces. And this is the only spot to get up on this side of the ridge. And the reason we do this now is because the other side of the ridge, which is the easy access, happens to be where we believe the deer are bedding and watching us access. So this is one of the first times and the first time this season that we've accessed from this side. So I expect big things out of this. Otherwise, I just burned a few extra hundred calories for no reason. So I'm going to get up here and slip into this stand, hopefully without spooking any deer. Well, I did not execute very well. I just came out of that little ravine right there. And I got up here and picked my head up. There was a doe standing at about 20 yards. And she had no idea I was there, which was pretty sweet. However, she ended up seeing me or smelling me because my wind was blowing right in her direction. And she took off blowing and blew about 30 times, which is really exciting for my hunt. There she goes again. She'll have to go at some point in the season for sure. But I went ahead and kept walking. And I got up here and there was a little buck with her just a little fork or a spike or something but there was definitely two deer and one was a buck the food blots back here over my shoulder and I'm gonna head that way I want to get this cell cam out get it rolling and hopefully slip in the rest of the way without bumping any deer now I got a squirrel going things just keep getting more and more disappointing got up here to the food plot and I was about to slap up this cell cam and the food plot has gotten destroyed and that was kind of a concern of mine because I've been hearing reports of people with their brassica plots just getting torn up before they even have a chance to produce a bulb and that is the case I don't think there's a single brassica that has gotten to the point of maturity. So that's pretty rough looking. However, my mock scrape definitely got hit because my branch is laying on the ground. And the wind sucks. It's blowing right over my shoulder back there, which is where the deer typically bed. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna slap up this camera probably and then figure out something from there. You always want to make your first sit in the spot the one that counts. And that, my friends, is not how you do it. And as you can see, I'm walking out now. I went in there, spooked two deer. Wind was bad. I got over to the food plot and it was destroyed. And that didn't really matter. That doesn't affect my hunt too much but I threw some milkweed once I was out in the food plot. And it was doing all kinds of things at one point. It was blowing south. And then at one point, it was going to the east. The east side of that food plot is where these deer bed. Or at least the deer that we're after, we think. A lot of the other deer come from the north. <laughs> so I don't really have a plan anymore. All I know is I probably just boogered that area, put my scent in it, and got nothing out of it. So I'm at least going to back out now, 
I go sit on the ground somewhere. However, I know I'm not hunting up there. Well, I'm finally in a tree tonight, which it wasn't looking good. I wasn't even sure if I was gonna end up hunting. It's somewhere probably about 5.45 now. And this is probably gonna be the biggest joke of a set that I make all season long. But whenever something like that happens earlier, where my plan A didn't work out, <clears throat> I like to come out and just sit different spots on this farm, even if I don't think I'll see anything at all. I just like to see what the deer do in different areas, or probably in this case, what the deer don't do. However, I'm hunting probably 60 yards off the driveway in the house is maybe a hundred yards straight in front of me. There's this little creek that runs alongside me. And as you can see, right there, there's a huge scrape. And there's rubs on some of these broken limbs that have fallen off these maple trees. So I grabbed the climber because I don't have my mobile set this weekend. And climbed up in this tree about ten feet, if that. I'm just going to sit here for the rest of the evening. It's kind of a cool little spot. I wouldn't expect much, but we'll see. 